Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today we continue what's been a popular topic for the subcommittee and indeed the committee at large. What impacts, if any, the changing climate is having on our daily life and the lives of our constituents? It's not likely that the committee will reach consensus on this question anytime soon, but nonetheless, I welcome and appreciate the witnesses who are here today. Dr. Titley, I'm interested not just in your experiences at NOAA, but also your work for the Navy, where you rose to rank of Rear Admiral. And I know I speak for the entire subcommittee when I say that we're grateful to you for your service to the nation. Dr. Titley's work has been at the interface of weather and climate through his long career with the U.S. Navy and now at the Pennsylvania State University. There's a long list of good scientists who would be capable of appearing before us today to shed light on the facts of the relationship between climate and weather. Actually, I would like to see more of them come before this subcommittee and the committee at whole, in the whole because whatever our diverse views are on climate change, there is absolutely no disagreement that severe weather events can devastate our constituents, deprive them of their livelihoods, and sometimes even take their lives. Ruling out research into a potential link between climate change and severe weather events would be burying our heads in the sand. Recently, I worked with members of the subcommittee on what is now bipartisan legislation to address the federal weather enterprise and how it might be improved to provide our constituents with better warning of severe weather events. I know my constituents on the coast of Oregon rely on weather forecasting information that can tell them when it's safe to go out fishing. My constituents in Yamhill County need information on weather patterns to help make decisions about the grapes they grow to make world famous Oregon Pinot Noir. And if we're here to learn that it's erroneous to associate any given day's weather or any particular storm with climate change, that's fine. However, climate change challenges us to think in terms of decades of accumulated change. Making comments on today's weather is easy. Learning what factors might influence long-term climate patterns is significantly more difficult. Our constituents should be able to count on their elected leaders to take a difficult look at a complicated subject. The lesson of this hearing cannot be that a potential link between climate change and severe weather is too difficult to determine or understand and therefore we should stop trying. It should not be controversial to examine if the weather will change as a consequence of global warming. Scientific projections from the IPCC make it apparent that we will live in a hotter world. We already have a warmer world than that of our grandparents. And many of our district's residents will experience drier environments with more drought. Those of us who represent particularly wet areas may find that precipitation arrives in more intense storms. The oceans will be warmer and that may well produce stronger or more frequent tropical storms. To focus only on the question of whether there will be more extreme events misses the point that by the end of this century, much of the world as we know it in our districts in the, and in the states and across the world will be considerably altered by the weather effects of climate change. We need to face up to the risks of global warming and do more to reduce carbon emissions. Americans have always boldly faced risks and challenges. Our owned armed services have already begun taking climate change seriously. The Navy, as Rear Admiral Dave Titley could attest, has been struggling with the strategic implication of year-round open seas in the Arctic. In summary, anthropogenic climate change is real. There is a strong consensus that we are already seeing climactic consequences from warming. The continued warming of the globe will have profound impacts on our country and on the world. This situation creates an opportunity for the United States to show leadership in reducing carbon emissions as well as in adopting and mitigating the effects of climate change. Finally, I, I want to join the chairman in noting that I do not want the absence of more members on my side of the aisle to be perceived as a lack of interest in this important topic. Uh, as the chairman noted this morning, there's a memorial service for Nelson Mandela at the National Cathedral and many members are attending that service. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back the balance of my time.